Do I look at you or do I look at the camera? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. We'll edit all the, you know, okay. all the bad stuff. <laughs> I think it's the reason it's called the anatomy of an article is so we can sort of analyze the start to finish process of a paper and examine how long it takes, what's involved, the research, um, the editing process, and how we uh, take an, I an idea and put it on paper and then weed out what we want, what we don't want, what our thesis is, and, you know, the overall message for our paper. Why Hillary? Why Hillary? Well, she is one of my heroines. She always has been. It started in high school. I just started, I read her autobiography, and I read uh, her other book that she wrote when she was a first lady. Uh, it takes a village, and just read everything I could about her. And then when the she s s decided to run for the Democratic presidential nomination, that's when I really supported her and watched her. And you know, every speech, every rally, every everything she had written in newspapers as she traveled across the country, I read and kept up with her. So when it came time for the assignment, uh, it was just an obvious choice to choose Hillary because I had already done so much research on my own, it was my own interest, it wasn't, I wasn't being told, you know, I have to look up stuff about Hillary. So, it was just, it was an obvious choice, and the hard part for me was trying to decide what about her to write. That was the hardest part. And even in the first couple of drafts that I turned in, um, and the final paper that I turned in for the class, my thesis was all over <laughs> It wasn't very clear. Uh, my professor was very kind enough to give me an A, but uh, it, is no, it was nowhere where it was today. Jonathan enrolled in my class on um, women in rhetoric, and it was his senior year at UMKC, and he was a great student. The assignment that the students have to do in that class all semester long, they work on doing um, a research paper on a woman speaker or writer who they think should be included in histories of rhetoric. And so the first day of class, because a lot of students take the class not knowing what rhetoric is, um, the first day of class I always ask students, like, who's a woman um, speaker or writer who you admire, who you think maybe is interesting? And, you know, right off the bat, Jonathan's like, Hillary Clinton! Um, so he was committed to her from day one, I think. I don't know that he ever considered doing this project on anybody else. I encourage all my students, like, you know, hey, there are opportunities to publish this work. At UMKC, we have other opportunities for them to, like, present their work at symposiums or other places. And I just think that's huge. Not all of them take me up on it. But um, the ones who have taken me up on it, in particular the ones who have gotten published in YSW, um, usually then take you know sort of the semester after the class. Um, they continue working on the project. Sometimes they do it for independent study credit. Sometimes they do it um, as a senior thesis. Um, sometimes they just do it, which is what Jonathan did. He didn't. He just the next semester he met with me two or three times. Um, he talked about you know sort of talked about revisions. I read more drafts for him. Um, so, so after the student, you know, so the student gets the paper to a point where he or she is ready to submit the work, um, then they send it off to the editor of YSW, and the editor reads through it, and if it kind of fits the scope of young scholars in writing, and um, is you know sort of what the journal generally looks for, then it's sent to two peer reviewers who are undergraduates who have either published in YSW. Um, the peer reviewers have a detailed form that they fill out that talks about sort of the strengths, the essay's strengths, the ways the essay could be comp could, uh, could be improved, and then um, there are sort of four categories: accept, accept with minor revisions, revise and resubmit, or reject. Most of the YSW students 
get revise and resubmit. <laughs> Occasionally they'll get an accept with minor revisions. So um, based on what the peer reviewers say, then as the editor, um, I would send it out to members of our editorial board who are faculty members from everywhere from the University of Sydney in Australia to um, uh, Boise State to uh, Texas A&M and Commerce, um, all over the place. And um, that faculty member then will read the essay and read the peer reviews and make a decision um, about what, whether that the piece moves forward and the student is re invited to revise and resubmit or whether it's probably not going to work out. Um, so then that person lets me as the editor know what he or she decides and then they communicate with the student author and um, in the case of a revision says, you know, here are changes I'd like to see. If you're willing to continue working on this, let me know. And when the faculty advising editor says, um, you know, this is done, this is where it needs to be, which is usually in September, maybe early October, um, it comes back to me, I take a quick read, it goes off to a copy editor, um, she copy edits, we send it back to the student to sort of approve often their queries. Um, we get that all finalized. Um, uh, then it's proofed and printed. My professor and I had worked on it so much for so long together that we kind of kind of got too close. Both of us got too close to the project, and so it was hard to keep an obje objective eye on what I was writing. So it wasn't until uh, Dr. Patty Hanlon Baker at Stanford took a look at it and wrote a very long letter of suggestions that I was finally able to see it in a different, from a different perspective. He had a lot going on in the early draft, and it was all very interesting, but given page limits, <laughs> given um, the kind of need to really develop the richness of his argument, I felt like he needed to cut things. Um, but I tried to be gentle in my suggestions. Um, I, I tried to, so he was comparing um, Hillary's um, early writings and her later writings and her early speeches and her later speeches. And although those are all written documents, um, written speeches are written for a listening audience, which is a different audience than writing. And so I, I tried to get, I tried to ask the question, can can you think about this article as maybe focusing on writing or oral arguments? Because as she's growing in all these ways that he was trying to make an argument for, how she presented them in a written text versus an oral text could be different. And so because um, he needed to think about sort of focus and organization, I, I tried, I said I thought he either needed to really pull these apart and have almost two separate sections or dump one <laughs> just because as interesting as it was, it was getting a little tangled up. I sent him articles because I actually taught a class on political rhetoric before. Um, so, I, and I had a, a, a wonderful article that talked about the changes in, um, in Hillary's rhetoric from when, in her speeches from First Lady to her speeches as Senate candidate. Um, and I think that helped him see kind of what I was trying to talk about, that it was, you know, some sort of parallel comparisons versus you know, writing, speaking, speaking, writing. Um, I think later on, as we were getting closer to deadlines, I might have been a little more. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how he described the differences in my comments, but I think I was a little more, I think here you're saying blank. Um, is that correct? It's quite nice to work with a student who really embraced that, because um, that's hard for writers to really embrace that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I would say that. And well done. Yay. It's all over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very exciting to have my very first paper published. I didn't know it would happen this soon, but I'm very grateful that I was able to keep working on it. It's taken me over a year to write it from start to finish. My advice to students who are working on a you know, paper, assignment, whatever it is, don't give up on it. All right, take one. How old are you, Jonathan? Oh, I'm 24 years old. No, I'm not. I'm 23 years old. <laughs> what else do you want to know? Hi, Hillary. I hope you enjoy our video. <laughs> I hope you enjoy our paper, too. <laughs> yeah, make sure and read it. <laughs> yeah, you better make sure and read it. <laughs> we'll edit that. Good. <laughs>